Welcome everyone to the last session of today's workshop. Uh, I will present how to use Halo to analyze Opal Multiplex IC images. So firstly, there are uh, a few available analysis software out there to analyze your Opal images. Firstly is Halo, as I will uh, show today. It's commercially available. Inform and Phenopter is also commercially available. PhysioFarm commercial software as well. And QPath is a free software that you can use uh, to analyze the whole five um, images. And also the built-in R packages uh, and featured here are the published um, packages by Peter Max researchers, IZ by Minyu and Nikon, inspired by Anna Critics. So what is Halo? Halo is a commercially developed analysis software by Indica Labs. It has uh, a few key features including Gold standard image analysis platform for quantitative tissue analysis in digital pathology. It has high throughput and quantitative tissue analysis. It has multiple built-in modules. It works best for huge data sets, um, including whole site images and batch analysis. It also supports multiple non-proprietary and platform-specific file types. So um, here are just a brief workflow when you are analyzing your Opal images using Halo, which I will go step by step. Firstly is to fuse the component tips into whole site image. So after you unmix and uh, process your images uh, in inform, you will then have to export them into component tips. And these individual tips then be able to be fused into the whole tissue image by in Halo. So after fuse, then you move on to annotate the tissue and classify uh, certain classes of your um, tissue. So in, well, for tissue annotation, HALO allows you to do manual annotation using the annotation tools. It's usually used when you have to draw the tissue border to uh, limit the space that you would like to analyze. To follow the pathologies markup, for example, a tumor area markup, to exclude tissue for background or non-specific stain area. It, it allows you to have multiple different layers of annotation uh, for example, tumor or stroma, and also allows automatic annotation using the classifier tool, which I will show later on. So manually in here, I have drawn um, the annotation around the tissue as shown with the solid yellow line, and I have drawn a couple of um, area that I would like to uh, exclude from the analysis as shown with the yellow marching and uh, line here. So then um, you can also use the classification module, uh, which is uh, Halo use trainable tissue classifier. It classifies different regions of the tissue based on the learn by example interface using the random forest algorithm. It can then add the classified tissue region as annotation layer. So then here, as you can see, I have um, um, made three different classes for the classification, which is trauma, tumor, and background. And then from that, I gave them a few uh, different examples to teach the software um, how to classify the different classes here. And then you can see in here, it, done, uh, it has done a pretty good job uh, as shown in the left uh, preview window. So in here, the left one is the manual ignition or just around the tissue and then I further classify it to three different classes here, the tumor, stroma, and background. And then from this step, you can then further use the automatic tissue annotation with classifier to actually um, turn the tumor and stroma into an annotation layer. This will come in handy when you are doing um, spatial analysis, which I will show later on uh, during the presentation. Okay, then after those steps, you can then move on to cell segmentation, which has three different parts of it, which is nuclear, cytoplasm, and membrane detection. Firstly, what is cell segmentation? This is the first and critical step of the analysis to split image into individual cells. It is required to specially detect and separate uh, single cells to allow single cell phenotyping and to quantify the cells. 
Cell segmentation on HALO again relies on nuclear cytoplasm and nuclear detection. So then let's move on to the nuclear detection. In HALO, it really heavily relies on the nuclear marker in the panel. Um, usually the essential marker is DAPI in your panel. Then you can have additional nuclear marker such as uh, FOX P3 or MIP, and which is really panel dependent. And then further, it has additional parameters to adjust the nuclear detection sensitivity um, in the module. And I will uh, explain it in the next slide. So it has seven different parameters that you can play with to actually uh, adjust and uh, the accuracy of the nuclear detection. First, the nuclear contrast uh, threshold adjusted to, uh, to detect the pixel as part of the nucleus based on signal to noise ratio. You adjust the minimum nuclear intensity to actually uh, threshold the average intensity on the object to identify it as a nuclei. You can then also adjust the maximum image brightness to allow the, uh, the broader working range of the nuclear detection. You can increase the segmentation aggressiveness to have more segmentation on the nuclei. You can either set through the field nuclear holes function to uh, if you have a variable nuclear staining or a um, hole in the nuclear staining that uh, make it to be able uh, to detect multiple um, nuclear rather than single nuclear. You can adjust the nuclear um, size, the min and max maximum range on that be detected as nuclei. And the nuclear roundness as well, um, zero is the irregular shape, and then one is the perfect circular shape, which then you can use to adjust and um, uh, filter the uh, nuclear that you would like to detect. Then after that, you do the cytoplasm detection, which is done by defining the maximum radius of cytoplasm around the nuclei. You can increase the failure to have a larger cytoplasmic area. So in the picture here, you can see the leftmost is not uh, doesn't have any cytoplasmic radius, and then one micron is the usual default size of cytoplasm radius, and you can see then you have the white halo around the cell, and then you can increase it if you feel it's not enough, and then you can see a thicker halo um, uh, around the cell, and then the membrane detection. So this part, you only use it when membrane marker is available in the panel. And in HALO, it's a bit different. Um, membrane marker in here will, will, will refer to the staining that can be further and not touching the nuclei, as you can see in this particular cell on a one 3 marker. For the cytoplasm marker uh, in here is, uh, for example, CD3, it is a membrane marker but because the staining envelopes around and touch the nuclei, it is classified as a cytoplasm marker in HALO. So for example, membrane detection, you can see the raw image here on the left is a one a 3 staining. If you don't use membrane detection, it will just be just the nuclei and then just the halo around it to be the um, cytoplasm. The membrane detection uh, helps you to actually then, in this particular cell, you can see it does um, uh, annotate, uh, segment the whole membrane around the cell. This will help with uh, to, uh, to have more accurate uh, cell segmentation. Then after you're um, happy with the cell segmentation, you can move on to the cell phenotyping. So first, of all, you have to set minimum threshold for positive signals for each guy, and depends of each uh, on each um, marker. Nucleus usually is for DAPI, cytoplasm. You can use it again and membrane, and depends on the marker that you're trying to set the threshold on. For this ex uh, ex specific example, I use DAPI, and you can see when there's no threshold set, it's just um, a light blue purplish color. And then when it's set for DAPI, you can see it turn yellow. So also in HALO, it allows you to do edge scoring, which is going to be uh, to three different uh, level. Um, low, which is yellow, medium is orange, and then high is red. 
Then after the uh, holding, you can do some front typing. And how to do that is you just have to set the rules for specific self front type. It allows multiple combination of dice included in the analysis setting for final typing and then interchange. And also for this, for example, um, uh, this particular final typing is using six different criteria from a seven plex um, panel. It's using a nitrophil uh, for phenotyping is neutrophil and it has six different rules here. And then at the, uh, for the right image, you can see is the preview of what it looks like from the um, cell population here. So then after that, you can do the spatial analysis. So what is spatial analysis? You usually use it to identify the spatial distribution of objects, cells, and or features across the whole tissue. Halo has four modes of spatial analysis, nearest neighbor, infiltration analysis, proximity analysis, and density heat map. So first, nearest neighbor. You use it to analyze the average distance and number of unique neighbors between two cell populations. So for example, here, I would like to find the nearest T cells to every mid positive cells. And on Halo, it allows you to store each individual data distance data or the markup image on your image which wants, uh, which will allow you to present it to your colleagues or presentation. So in also we'll uh, have this special part here where you can um, show it on presentation and in summary it will show you how many positive cells across the tissue and the average distance uh, of positive cells cells and the number of unique T cells to each mid positive cell. Then for the proximity proximity analysis, it is to determine the number of one cell population within a certain distance of another cell population. So with this example, I would like to measure T cell within the 100 micron um, proximity of mid positive T cells, uh, more mid positive cells, on a number of uh, 20 bands, which is gonna give me a five micron range. So this is the markup image uh, of the plot, special plot. It will show you the T cells that is more than 100 micron, so it's outside the range and then inside the range. And then it will give you this uh, histogram plot, which you can show. Um, and then it's just, uh, you can see it's the further it is from uh, the MIP, the lesser it is, the number of these ones. Okay, then for the infiltration analysis, it is used to measure the number of cells within a set range of an annotated region of interest. So this is where the automated um, annotation using classifier comes in handy. Because with this, I would like to do, or to measure the T cell within the tissue layer but in corresponding to tumor. So inside the tumor, which is 50 microns, and then outside of tumor, which is 200 microns, and then having a 25 bands, which is give me a 10 microns range. And then also in here, I would like to store individual object data, which uh, allow me then to do more um, 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 a plotting histogram outside Halo. From this, it will show you the heat map on the image. Uh, again, the red is just inside the tumor. And then the cooler the color, it means it's the further it is from the tumor. And then it will then plot it out um, in this plot image. And then the blue is outside the interface, which is then still inside the 200 microns. And then the red is inside the tumor. And then the gray one is the T cells, which is beyond the 200 microns outside the tumor. And then from here, it will show you the infiltration histogram as well. And then you can see it is higher in, uh, in averaging is around 120 microns uh, further from the tumor. 
And then the last one is density heat map analysis, which allow you to determine the density of one cell population in the tissue area within a certain radius. Then here I set the radius of 25 microns to measure the T cell density. And from here you can see then the, um, it mostly is quite cold in here. It doesn't have much of um, dense um, T cells population here. Mostly it's just here, but the rest is really cold in here. That will show you the average T cells within 25 micron and then the T cell density per micron square and then the minimum and maximum uh, number as well. So then lastly obviously you need to export the analyzed data and the data from the analyzed image all can be exported including the analysis report, summary data, individual object data. This is usually is quite important because if you want to further use the R packages, this is where you use the data from. Annotation, analysis settings, classifier settings, usually is used to be able to redo the uh, analysis uh, next time. Um, Mockup images and spatial plots usually used for presentation. So, in summary, Halo image analysis software, it contains the whole workflow to analyze your uh, multiplex uh, IC images at least the basic workflow. It's easy to use step-by-step -step workflow. You don't need to know um, how to macro writing or um, coding language. Cell segmentation is really essential. You need a good nuclear marker to uh, segment the cells, which is important for the next uh, steps. Last but not the least, you really need to optimize your panel and really good signal, which is important for analysis. So thank you everyone. I would like to acknowledge the rest of the people here uh, for this presentation. Thank you very much for listening.